Hey Thrivers, you're listening to episode number 21. Today we're chatting with a professional organizer and mama of two little girls, Melissa Groff. Melissa is the owner of Namaste Organized, and she is so fun to follow on Instagram. We wanted to meet her in person and ask her all of our questions. We realize we are not alone in our struggle to get the laundry done each week, find a home for every piece of Tupperware, or tidy up the playroom. So we thought Melissa would be the perfect guest for all the busy moms listening. Stay tuned to learn some practical tips and advice for keeping your home in order and to hear about some of Melissa's exciting upcoming projects. Welcome to The Thrive, a podcast for working moms. This is for all the women and moms listening. If you work from home, in an office, run your own business, or are the CEO of your family, this podcast is for you. Because at the end of the day, all moms are working moms. Rachel and Christine invite you to celebrate the victories, get advice, listen to their mom fails, and to know you aren't alone, to thrive in your everyday life. Welcome everybody, this is Rachel and Christine. We are super excited to be joined by Melissa Groff today. Hello, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. We're ready to take notes and learn from an organizational expert. Well, I am <laughs> here and ready to give you some tips and tricks. So, Perfect. yeah, so well, let's Melissa do it. is the owner of Namaste Organized, and we reached out to her over Instagram because I've been following <laughs> all of your posts, and I love that she's created this thing she's coined. Um, hashtag swipe therapy, which is like those before and afters that Mm -hmm. it's just like you look at the first picture and it kind of hurts your brain, at least if you're OCD like I am. Yep. And then you swipe to see the after picture and it's like, oh my gosh, it's so great. Yeah, Yeah, it's true. There's very, there's a very um, important difference to your brain when you're looking at something calm and when you're looking at something very chaotic, Um, you know, decision fatigue really starts to kick in and it's just, it's hard to look at a really chaotic picture. So I find it very therapeutic and I, apparently other people are, are as well. So yeah, it's beautiful. And I know in our busyness, even just seeing the most simple spaces organized and when peace comes to your home, it really does, yeah, change my mood. So I'm excited to even learn tips from you and how you help your clients find peace and in, in Zen in their houses. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's cause it's true. Like I can't work well from home. If my house is out of order, especially because like I typically work from the couch or like our whole common area is like very open. Yeah. So whether I'm sitting at the table, the couch, in the kitchen, whatever, I can see everything. Mm -hmm. So if it's like toys all over the place, like it just, I can't (laughs) focus. Well, you guys already hit on something like really important that I like to focus on with clients and people because I think so often they start immediately thinking and talking about their stuff But in reality, what we want to shift the conversation to is like your, you know, mental health and how productive are you at home? You know, part of the reason I wanted to start this business, like my why is to support women because women are often doing 800 different things. (laughs) And, you know, the village is now becoming a really, it's becoming a different type of village. And I just wanted to be kind of a member of other women's village. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Yeah, I like that. Well, I definitely want to hear um, more about your business, how you came up with the name. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Why don't you start by just sharing some more about who you are, your family, and how you... You got to become this great organizer. Oh, thanks. Well, I think you'll hear that this is a pretty common theme with professional organizers that like I've been tidy, neat, and organized pretty much my whole life. So Mm -hmm. I've been kind of practicing my whole life. Um, And I shared recently on Instagram that there was kind of a really big shift for me when I moved from Oregon to Pennsylvania because I was young, I was 10 and life felt pretty chaotic. So kind of being able to control like my environment at home, that was my way of like kind of practicing some self care and making sure that like my environment when I was at home was calm and serene. And that was really helped me feel kind of comfortable. And that was, (laughs) yeah, it was a big change (laughs) for being so young to know that that was something that was important to you and be able to harness it is great. Yeah. Well, I think, I I think when you're young like that, you do things out of instinct. And so I, I don't think I knew what I was doing at the time, but I think looking back on it now, I definitely have like the hindsight that that was a really pivotal moment and like, Oh, I can, this is one thing I can do for myself. 
So I actually, I went to Penn State and I was a marketing major. And yes, we so are. A, yeah, Penn State. <laughs> so I'm a Nittany Lion and I have a marketing degree. Um, so that's part of my background. I actually worked for telecom for a little bit um, for Avaya. And then I was at home with my kid. Well, excuse me. So in between, I kind of was like not really digging the office environment. <laughs> so I went back to school to be an RN which I really did. I loved it. Wow. I really loved being a registered nurse. But so you didn't just go back to school. Like you did, you went back to school, completed it and did that for a while. I did. I did that for a few years. And then I had, when I had my kids, I was at home with them, totally planning on going back into nursing. Um, so I think it was really helpful to me to be at home for a little bit to almost like take a step back because the things that I loved about being an RN was being of service and really getting to spend time with people and building relationships. And it was it was tough in that environment, in the hospital environment. So when I thought about what I wanted to do, you know, when you don't rely on your income and you're able to take a pause for a little bit, it was really nice to think about, okay, well, when I re-enter the workforce, like, <laughs> what do I really want to spend my time doing? And I had a friend ask me to come help with her pantry. She felt really overwhelmed. I helped her out. It went so well that she was like, you should do this. I found these results. And I just felt like something that I've noticed in my life is that I need to listen when people hold up the mirror for me and kind Absolutely. of say like, this, this is something you're good at. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not happening every day, but, <laughs> but it's hard, I think, to accept, you know, compliments and people yeah. telling you, oh, you're doing, you do really well with this. So it was really, she was a really good friend to kind of hold up the mirror for me. I know. So awesome. you I like your... how you just explained that. Like, yeah, it's... like a visual person. Yeah. So like, that's a really good example. Yeah. It's just taking a pause to listen. And now, did you have your girls at that point when you were still nursing? You were married, right? I was married. Okay. I did not have my girls yet. Mm -hmm. So when I was pregnant with Avelina, I gave myself like two weeks before I was due. And of course, I went overdue, which I know <laughs> some of you or both of you were I was overdue. overdue twice. And then this time, he came a few days early. Okay. So I was overdue twice. So we'll talk about that another yeah. time, too. <laughs> but um, I gave myself a couple weeks before I was due. And then I had been at home with them after that. And I... I I just thinking about going back to floor nursing when I was breastfeeding mm -hmm. seemed really intimidating because you're super busy. Um, there's not a lot of time for things like pumping. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, I definitely wanted to give myself a year um, with Avelina. And then kind of by that time, I just, you kind of get into the new routine. I really felt like a stay at home mom at that point and I was enjoying mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. So I just, I basically did that with both of my kids and then when Estelle was two, she's my younger daughter, I just really felt like, I feel good. I kind of feel ready to take something of my own on. And that's a kind of really coincided when a friend of mine had asked okay. me to help her out with her pantry. So it's just timing. Right. Yes. You know, everything in life is like <laughs> timing and being open to it. So this is still newer for you, right? It is. Okay. Yeah, so how new. long have you been full force with your business? So I got my LLC in January, so it's been about six months. Wow. Nice. Yeah. And that's awesome just on the business side that you mentioned you got your LLC right away because mm -hmm. a lot of people do things on the side or I think for a lot of people it takes a while for a hobby to become a business for them to recognize like I'm actually making good money, like mm -hmm. I should figure out how to be more quote unquote legit. Yeah. But <laughs> it's great when you start that way just for all types of budgeting, tax, and other reasons, but um, I just feel like from your Instagram, from the things you share, it, you, you seem like you've been doing this much longer. Oh, like, I would have you. assumed that this was something you've been doing for at least three or four years. Like, well, Thank you. I enjoy it, and I think that shows, you know? Yeah, you just when have you're so many practical tips. I feel like you've probably been doing a lot of these things right. in your personal life. Right. And so that's why I'm like, how does she know all these things? <laughs> but you were probably like, why don't I turn this into a business? Like, I have some really great ways of, like, keeping our own home tiny or whatever. Right. And yeah, I just felt really compelled to kind of pass on some things that I had learned to, right. to other women that I felt like could use it. And, you know, luckily I feel like people have really embraced me and 
it's been really fun. And I think, like I said, I think that shows I, I have a passion for it. I love, I'm interested in it. So I love like reading about it, listening to, you Mm -hmm. know, podcasts about it. And, um, yeah, it's been really fun. I like business, um, like running my own business and I like kind of professional, um, development and that type of thing. So kind of, you know, I, I like it. And so I feel like I like listening and kind of awesome. That's awesome. I think just from what you've said, like I can relate so much because it's great being a mom and just having time to focus on that. But yeah, it's fun to feel like you're learning again, to feel like you're really like having days that you're like, it wasn't just productive because like I changed all the diapers and I did laundry Mm -hmm. and I got the house cleaned. But like I met with somebody and really helped them, you know, or I, you know, worked on whatever it is for you organizing. But um, there is something so special about being able to do some type of a business while you're also a mom. Yeah. I love the balance. We were talking about that earlier, just how like in different seasons it feels great. And then maybe it changes where you need something different. And moms are so different. Some people have a passion for staying at home and others like you were working and then you stopped when you had your girls. So you've definitely figured out what works for you and have fallen into your groove. I agree with Rachel. It seems like you've been doing this for years. Oh, <laughs> thanks, guys. So how'd you come up with good. the name? Oh, I, it just, I was out to eat with my husband and we were like, what should we call this? And <laughs> we were just kind of brainstorming. And when I thought about what I wanted to bring to people, it was a sense of peace and calm. And I think just based in my own life, yoga has brought that to my life. And Mm -hmm. so it was just, I remember, um, hearing namaste something. It's not like that part of it is not a new concept. I'd heard Mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Like the play on words. Yeah. I heard that that namaste, namaste, like like namaste in bed. (laughs) Um, and so it just came to me and we both thought it was catchy and appropriate felt like it fit, you know, my personality and the business and Mm -hmm. everything. So, and you just said we were thinking about a name. So I'm getting a sense that your husband is and has been really supportive of you. I think. Oh my gosh. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. He seems like a big cheerleader of yours. (laughs) Totally. He's like, whatever makes you happy. He's always been like that, which is really nice Mm -hmm. because it really gives me the freedom to to really think about what makes me happy. And yeah. Yeah. That's awesome that he's on board. Does totally. he, like, is he also organized? He is. He, I think, isn't quite, like, if I give him a system, which is, like, <laughs> I, so a system is a defined way to use your space. So, okay. like, that's what containers and labels do mm-hmm. for a space. Um So if I give him a system to work with, he will follow it to a T. He loves it. So he just isn't naturally inclined to, like, spend the time. Well, this is where my socks go. Yeah, yeah, so he – but he's into it. And your brain works one way where that probably gives you so much life to come up with those things and then pass it along, and then he can carry it out. (laughs) Yeah. I always laugh, though, because he's the one that loves that label maker. The one that you (laughs) won, Christine. Do you love it? It's changed my life. Oh, I'm so glad. I labeled all my light switches. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I just read in my pantry, and you commented, like, oh, you got to label them. So that's my next task. (laughs) Do it. You'll be so glad. We can uh, share it in our show notes. Okay. It's a Brother P-Touch label maker, and there's various um this is all new to me well you need one Rachel because (laughs) it's such it's it's a really simple you can also accomplish I always like to tell people this uh scotch tape and a sharpie will do the same thing so labeling doesn't need to be fancy neither do do containers um Mm -hmm. there's lots of options out there but the brother label maker is amazing you literally type like a little keyboard and then hit print and it prints out like a little sticker and you can stick wherever but it cracks me up because before this business was even an idea of mine dave has been going around our house (laughs) labeling everything so he definitely has a little bit of it in him too yeah (laughs) i just wondered because i figured he was either like on board or like maybe he was totally opposite which even like fueled your fire even more like (laughs) yeah like my number one job is just keeping my husband in order because he's a mess yeah i i feel like at least my house we have that whole opposite thing going on luckily I don't know we are very similar Dave and I like in a lot of ways like when we built our house we liked the same stuff we just Mm -hmm. thankfully 
um, kind of has a lot of similarities. So yeah, we, yeah. Well, we, I mean, my husband and I have yeah. very similar styles. Like in that respect, we didn't have a whole lot of like we did a lot of remodeling to our right. Home. So that was never an issue. And what's funny is a lot of the people that we work with were like, you guys are really decisive. And we were both That's like, what people said to us. Well, too. we already looked at things and we know what we want. Yep. Like, and I could ask people for opinions or whatever, but then I'm just going to be like, oh, well. And I just think that's a waste of time. Mm-hmm. So, agreed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. In that respect, we're very similar. But, like, laundry, I have just stopped, like, even mm-hmm. giving him his folded laundry. Mm-hmm. There are many weeks where I'll just be like, if you want it, it's still in the dryer. Or, you know, like, your basket is on top of the the washing machine. Because he will still have a basket in our bedroom of other stuff. Right. And, oh, my gosh, I will fold it so nicely. <laughs> and then as he, like, lives out of his laundry basket, it becomes, like, a hot mess. And it just makes me so sad that my hard work mm-hmm. of folding is now, like, just a pile. Yeah. So, Maybe yeah, I just recently I basket. just cut him off. I should. Oh, yeah. But I try to fold it so it doesn't get all wrinkly. Yeah. You know, I try to be nice, but... I'm at my wit's end. <laughs> Kyle, I'm cutting you off from Rachel's <laughs> Kyle, laundry <you're> service. <laughs> well, and so we had this later in our notes for the show, but I want to talk about it now because you mentioned laundry. We wanted to know tips you have for moms, busy moms. Yes. And I know you had done an Insta story about laundry. And after I heard that, I tried to follow your advice. Oh. Yes. And there was actually another podcast I listened to, Coffee and Crumbs. They did a whole oh. episode on laundry. Yeah. And so, Melissa, your advice, and I want you to expand on this, is to do a little bit every day. Yes. So, typically with organizing, especially when you have a really out-of-control space, I'll say, like, tackle it all at once. But I feel like with laundry, since it's a regular thing, like, laundry's not going away. You're going to have to do a little laundry forever. Sorry, yeah. everyone. Um, so, I do one load of laundry every day. I don't have it scheduled. I do think sometimes that's helpful for people. So like one child's laundry is Monday, you know, Tuesday is, is another child's laundry, Mm -hmm. you know, Wednesday. So kind of through work through that, but I can't handle like that schedule makes me a little, it's a little too extreme for me, but I do find that some people find that helpful. But Mm -hmm. if you do one small load of laundry every day, I'll like put it in, in the morning, working moms, you might have to work this, um, like work out of the house Mm -hmm. moms would maybe have to do, you know, what first when they wake up, put a load of laundry in, and then before they leave for the day, put it in the dryer. And then at the end of the night, at some point in the evening, like Dave takes the kids for like 20 minutes. It only takes 20 minutes to fold. That's true. Like a small load. Right. So I find that laundry in smaller batches, it just makes me so anxious when I go into the laundry room and there are piles and piles of laundry. Mm -hmm. And when things feel overwhelming, we don't want to do them. That's (laughs) probably, I I think that's probably why my laundry situation has gone out of control. Well, so I tried this and it probably took us like two weeks, no joke, to get to the point where we only had one small right. basket because we were so behind and I feel like because I'm home I should be the one to do that and my husband works so hard that I want to at least get it washed but when I heard that advice I tried it and I also felt really recognized and seen for the trouble I was having mm-hmm. where I realized it's not just because I'm not good at organizing this is a problem a lot of people have mm-hmm. and now there was a solution I could try so it's definitely made the whole process a little easier. I mean, my bed right now is full of two loads, but <laughs> I, I, I want to do it more yeah. than I used to because yeah. I have a plan. So I will get it folded tonight. That's great. I will. So I, you find <laughs> it has been helpful for you. It has. Now, okay. I think my hang up too was like, oh, isn't that wasting water if you don't do a lot? But if I combine the girls and ours, it's a good size load. And in the end, it's definitely helping our whole family operate better. So Okay. I think yeah. too, I mean, at least... If you're concerned about the whole water thing, yeah. our machine like has like a sensor. It only fills to like yeah. So how just much turn it needs, I guess. Water. Like if you're doing a small load, just make sure you turn the water dial down to like a small load or whatever. I have an old school like front loader. It's called the Speed Queen. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of this. <laughs> no, but or That's I the brand. Top, sorry, a top loader. Excuse me. I did. We didn't do the front Speed loaders. Queen. It's called the Speed Queen. It's like for industrial use. Like nice. they use Speed Queens <laughs> are like a brand they put in laundromats. Okay. This is the residential version but it is so basic it's got dials like it is the most basic and I 
love it. It oh, gets our clothes awesome. so clean, and we have a well. Okay. Okay. So it's a little bit, I mean, maybe we're operating on a kind of a different um, okay. thing on that. But I do think just make sure you turn your water down because you're okay. you're only using the water in, like, comparison to the size of the load. So, right. And I don't yes, know why that probably, was always a thought because it's not like I'm always watching how much water I use anyway. So I think probably <laughs> if you turn the tap off while you're brushing your teeth, you're going to save more water over and time. And I don't do that, so I'm right. worried about the laundry. <laughs> yeah, so do your laundry every day and turn the tap off while you're brushing your teeth. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> This is just funny because I just, of uh, the aspects of our lives, I do a lot of blogging for my clients and mm-hmm. I've probably shared before my husband has a septic business, Okay, which is not glamorous, but hey, it pays bills. It's good business. Everyone needs it. And if you have a well, chances are you might also be on septic because most people with wells aren't on public water. Correct. Or sewer. Yep. So anyway, if you have your own septic system, it's also a really good idea to just do like a small load here and there. Because when you do, like, four or five loads in a day, it can really, like, overload your your septic tank. Right. So, fun fact. Yes. These things that I never thought I would know about, well, then I married somebody that's in this business, and now I do all their content, marketing, and writing, and I'm just just an expert. Well, that's great, and that's a really good (laughs) tip for people. Yeah, yeah, they told us that when we got, we also have a septic system, so okay. they had told us okay. that, yeah. Yeah, especially if it's really rainy, like summertime, like your drain field can only handle so much, yeah. so better for your yard, better for your septic and <laughs> draining and all of those things. The other tip that I do want to share regarding laundry is if you have kids, so my kids are only two years apart, and okay. I will buy them kind of the same matching, matching do their laundry separately. So that okay. you're not trying, you don't have to look at every tag and see, oh, is this 2T, is this 4T, mm. and split it out that way. Oh. Our girls are the same age, so I have, like, that same yeah. struggle. But see, our <laughs> share room, smart. and they ha- they share a hamper. They share mm-hmm. a laundry basket. Yeah. So I would have to start, like, separating our things from the get-go. Yeah, I do. I have one in each of their rooms. Okay. Um, but another tip that somebody shared with me recently that I liked was they'll buy all the same colored socks for, like, one child. Like, one child would get, oh, you know, blue pink, whatever. Mm-hmm. So nice. that, I thought that was helpful. I just, I don't think I have the um, attention span to like mm-hmm. <laughs> just make sure that I'm buying the same color all the time. Yeah. yeah. And that, that sounds that good too. Like those little rules for yourself. Yeah. But then you have to like almost put like a code in your laundry room because if your husband happens to be folding or I actually try to plan out my laundry based on like when I have my um, mother's helper yeah. or when my mom <laughs> is coming um, because my mom's with me all day Mondays and when the girls nap, she like will fold laundry for me. So nice. So maybe <laughs> those rules are good, but like keep track of them for whoever else might help you. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure your girls soon enough will be old enough to even help with that if they had their own baskets, they could even help load it in or help bring it yeah, from their mm-hmm. room and they could know their colors too. I mean, my girls are too young for that. But your girls, I know, are so, Rachel, like they love just being in whatever you're doing. Okay. So somehow to get them to help sort. Yeah. I'm sure they could help you yeah. sort. And they, they aren't bad at folding like uh, washcloths, folding, folding little towels, mm-hmm. right? And like thinks it's the best thing. Yeah. That's good. Good. Get them involved. Yeah. <laughs> well, while we're on the topic of tips for mom... I, Rachel, I don't know if you have a, a, a question for an expert here. I do. But. <laughs> oh, good. I like this rapid fire. Let's yes. do it. Well, oh, go ahead. My question was Tupperware covered. Oh. That is like yeah. the death of me. Like, I just don't know how to keep that area organized. I know. Well, I'm going to tell you something probably kind of inconvenient, but you might have too much to begin with. Does okay. it fit in there comfortably into one cabinet? So here's the thing. Where should I put it? I think this might be part of the problem is we renovated our kitchen Mm -hmm. and I was either pregnant or like I had just, I think I was pregnant with Rowan. Every time we've done a big project, I've been like about to have a baby. So maybe that's that's my husband's form of nesting. I don't (laughs) know. Um, But because we were kind of putting it back together and I wasn't able to do as much, um, I remember he helped like put a lot of things away. Mm -hmm. So part of me feels like maybe it's just not even in the right type of cupboard. Mm -hmm. We have it in like our, one of our corner cupboards. That's where mine is. Yeah. That works. Does it, does it have a, um, like lazy Susan on the inside? No, we have a lazy Susan like on the Mm -hmm. bottom. It's in like a top one of the corner ones. Yeah. I mean, I probably would try to prioritize a space closer to where you're using it. Um, I think Tupperware does well, like even in a drawer. So I always say to nest them. Mm. Nesting, I think, helps you 
consolidate, like use the least amount of space, maximize your space by nesting. What is nesting? Like, so you put one square inside the same size square, um, like all the same, like with like. So you're just okay, putting all yeah. the so same. So like your small rectangles, rectangles go in your big rectangles. And yes, so correct. Like those yep. nesting dolls. That yes, ne- make oh, a nesting yes. doll in there. Yep, that yep. makes sense. And then I like to separate the lids and either put them underneath, again, nested, like biggest lid, smaller lid, like underneath the same shape. Okay. Or completely separate the mm-hmm. lids. And they have little lid organizers. So it's almost like a pan um, organizer where they it makes it <coughs> vertical yes, for you. I've so you can that. easily just kind mm. of take it out. I'm using visuals here, but you guys can't see it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like to separate them so you're not pulling one thing out and all right. the lids go flying everywhere. <laughs> because I don't know about you guys, but that like makes me crazy. Yeah. Well, I think your first question was a good question. Do you have too much? Because I think we all probably fall victim to that as right. time goes on. Yeah. I don't know where it comes from, but I it have, comes from Chinese food. I've, <laughs> and, yeah. Or people bring you over something yes. and they leave it with you. Yeah. And then I'm like, why do I feel guilty for throwing out these stupid like <laughs> containers? But I'll be like, oh, like that's like a good one I can use. Yeah. Well, guilt is so like that's oh, a man. very common feeling about yeah. the things that we have, and mm-hmm. we have a difficult time parting with it. But I can tell you that it's definitely worth prioritizing yourself mm-hmm. and your space and feeling really calm in your space over the guilt of not getting rid of the Chinese food container. Like that is definitely to me a very black and white situation. Mm-hmm. There's other times where there's a little bit more um, at play that I wouldn't be like, no, get rid of that. But um, <laughs> that's an okay, I give you the okay to get rid of some of the things that right. might not stick around forever. Well, just imagining how good we feel looking at your Instagram feed, I can imagine when you go into your clients' homes and help them in person, how good that feels. Oh, yeah. it's the best feeling, you guys. When you when I finish a space and get to show people, it just is like, it's the best. We have so much fun. And so do you have them go through it with you, or do you primarily come in and you're like, um, you go enjoy your yeah, that was coffee and I will just be here in your pantry. What do you do? So I really tailor it to the client's uh, requests. So some people want to be very involved because they feel very, um, and it it will kind of depend on the space sometimes. So like if it's their master closet, mm-hmm. they feel much more close, like they feel yeah. much closer to their clothing and want to have a more active role in, um, you know, making choices about their clothing. And some people, um, you know, send me into the playroom and are just <laughs> like, keep the things that work. And I want to go put my feet up, and I encourage people to do that. Uh, so it's really whatever um, my client wants to do. And mm-hmm. everyone's so different, and so I work with people very differently. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I love the idea of, like, like I'm pretty organized. So mm-hmm. if I had somebody come in, like, you could just do my kitchen, and I would leave. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't even like cooking. <laughs> That's right. probably why my kitchen yeah. is like this. <laughs> Rachel organized my kitchen. I just told them, because you were there when I moved in. So when they were like, where's the silverware? I was like, it's there. Rachel put it there. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you need some, an extra job, you get you email me. <laughs> oh, no. I don't you think you've got enough. like, the systems and things. Yeah. I, I would, like, I could do, like, a cleaning business. Mm-hmm. I always joke that, like, oh, that's yeah. what I could do. Because I feel like I have a good system of like keeping things like tidy and clean oh that's great I need both of you then <laughs> yeah because those are very different things yeah cleanliness and tidiness I mean they they go hand in hand but now yeah. you mentioned helping like with a playroom do you have any tips for that whole situation I do it depends on the problem so typically okay. when I talk to people I'm asking a lot of questions first mm-hmm. and so Sometimes people, their space is too small. And so the problem that we're solving is how to maximize the space. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the first step I always um, encourage is a declutter session. Um, And a lot of people, a hundred percent of people I've worked with has, have said on their own, like we have too much stuff. Um, So obviously we make sure that everything we're keeping in the space they love and use. So um, we start there. And then um, my tips are to go vertical. So I think a lot of times people miss uh, going up. And by Mm -hmm. going vertical, I mean using some type of like storage, um, like cubed storage. I love in playrooms. It's uh, Mm -hmm. perfect because you go up. 
and you're able to stack things and like use cubes. We have one of those in our room, like those Ikea yeah. four square things. Mm. Yeah. Calyx. Like Ikea Calyx is, I always shop them first. Target also has a cube storage system. Mm -hmm. um, but it's basically using a furniture piece or even shelving, open shelving a lot of times, like nurseries or playrooms, I'll suggest some shelving for like books yes. or just some smaller toys that you want to both use and display. Yeah. There were some of those on Amazon Prime Day. Were there? <laughs> I <laughs> didn't shelving see them, minutes. Christine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I missed I, out. Melissa is doing a, what is it, no <laughs> by <laughs> July. <laughs> so it was I a lightning it. deal and I didn't get there in time. Oh, but bummer. It's Prime okay. Day ruined us. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I was a little sad to miss out, but I didn't even looks, I don't really know what, Good I, idea. what I missed. Yeah. But I also think if you were to like look around your house, I'm sure we all have a piece that's somewhere that we could repurpose Correct. for a shelving mm -hmm. purpose in one room that maybe isn't being used in another. Totally. And yeah. my other um, tip for that is toy cycling. So I think a lot of people forget to leave out some toys. So toy cycling mm -hmm. is basically... You would take some of your toys, put it in a bin, and put it in another storage area kind of out of your way, and then keep some toys out that the kids play with. And then on, you know, every three months, switch the toys. So put the ones mm -hmm. that were out in the bin and away. Um, and that so keeps smart. keeps things fresh, but then a uh, smaller quantity of toys are in your living space. Yeah, that's so. what I wanted to do because my daughter just had a birthday, so we got some toys, and they're all in the garage mm -hmm. waiting for me to yeah. take out some of her older things and let her play with new things. So I like yeah. that idea. We and kind of rotate from like basement to like living area or bedroom, mm -hmm. and that's so great. yeah, similar strategy. Yeah. And we'll sometimes around birthdays pick a few toys that we're ready to let go. So if you know you're, you're ha you have something coming up that's going to bring, mm, you yeah. know, some items into your home, you want to maybe identify some items that are going to go out because what happens is obviously it's just like, you know, losing weight, calories in, calories out, yeah. or whatever. It's like stuff in, stuff out. If you have more stuff coming in during the year and you don't have enough stuff going out, your house is going to end up cluttered right mm -hmm. so it's just having some checks and balances on when yeah. things come in that's so true well I have so many more questions and I feel like <laughs> we could talk organizing all day um but you did mention a few other exciting things so we're going to take a quick break and then we will talk about those things too okay hey thrivers today's episode is sponsored by Rachel Klein marketing and creative that's right that's my own personal business if you've listened to the show, you've probably heard me talk about mom life and business a lot, but you might not know what I actually do. Well, since 2014, I've been designing websites and offering social media marketing services for small businesses. I work with companies here in PA and across the United States, and it's my goal to help small business owners grow their online presence with social media, SEO, and responsive website design. If you've been considering a new website in 2019, I want to personally invite you to schedule a consultation with me to review your existing website and receive a quote for a new mobile-friendly website that will highlight your skills and your services. You can find all the details at rachelkleincreative.com or email me at rachelkleincreative at gmail.com. Simply mention the Thrive Podcast. It's time for our review of the week. At Jen Miller 710 left this sweet comment about our show. This podcast is a wonderful breath of real motherhood, friendship, faith, and laughter. I discovered this podcast this month and I'm flying through the episodes. It is so heartwarming to hear their friendship between these two moms and their willingness to share and be real about the ups and downs of everyday life. Their interviews are wonderful and the topics relevant and interesting. Time flies when I'm listening and it's like sitting down with two friends. Wonderful ladies, can't wait for more to come. Thanks, Jen Miller, for leaving this review. And listeners, we'd love to hear from you. So when you're finished listening to this episode, be sure to head on over and leave us a comment. Welcome back. We are talking to Melissa Groff um, from Namaste Organized, all about organization. And we were asking her some practical tips <laughs> for laundry. We also covered um, Tupperware and Playrooms. Oh. Mm -hmm. What I would like to know, like, as far as the people that you help, um, what is one of the most common trouble areas for people? Like, are we totally, like, crazy ladies when we're having these playroom, <laughs> laundry, Tupperware things? Or are those pretty common? Absolutely not. You guys are not crazy ladies. Perfect. It's very common. So let me reassure you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pantries are also very difficult for oh, busy women because... 
feeding themselves and feeding the kids is a huge thing, Christine. We were just talking about how um, that's been actually one thing that's been difficult for me, starting the business and um, kind of adjusting to a new schedule. I feel like yeah. food and making healthy food for all of us is the first thing to go. Yeah. So pantries, playrooms, just because so much stuff filters in and out of those spaces. Right. There, like, when you think about how much, how many things you're managing for a space, Pantries are very things heavy. Playrooms are very things heavy, mm-hmm. and closets, um, mm-hmm. like like clothing, can be a pretty big thing too. Okay. Because that's just for some people, they buy a lot of it, and I'm not immune to that either. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and I, that was something that I recently tackled my closet yeah. and my closet and all my drawers because I still have a, I don't have a walk-in closet, which I did. But um, I have a dresser that has a lot of, like, my pants and tees and things like that. And I just didn't even have space for stuff. I don't know how I had so much. And Mara, who also does organizing, mm-hmm. she's been on our show, she came and helped me one day. And, like, I have space for things now. <laughs> like, I didn't realize, like, I told Christina, I was like, she really just, like, I have more space. And you were dying of, like, you were laughing because her business is called More Space right. Organizing. <laughs> so I was like, well, I know why she needed that. <laughs> um, but truly, like, getting rid of certain things, like, I didn't even know I had so much stuff. Like, no. it really was freeing. And I've been more um, intentional about, like, the way I fold things now mm-hmm. and, like, putting things away. Because, like, I want to keep it this clean. Like, mm-hmm. this, like... I don't know. The way I had it before, I literally couldn't close some of my drawers. Like, there was things sticking out of them, and I would just, like, smush them down in to, like, close the drawers the whole way. So, from the outside, it was, like, out of sight, out of mind. Right. But, like, getting dressed was difficult because, like, it was hard (laughs) to remember what I had or what I didn't have. And, yeah, so much better now. Yeah. It's, it's, like, so worth it. It's so motivating, I think, to really get your space just how you want it. And. Mm -hmm. It also allows for the things that you love to shine Mm -hmm. and uh, clothing and even things that you love. Like I found so many cards that people then ended up displaying or, Mm -hmm. you know, a picture that their um, child drew them and we take a picture of it and then put it in a book. So my favorite thing to do for people is to really illuminate Mm -hmm. the things that they already have that have been kind of like buried under other things that don't, they don't love as much as, as they, you know? So, yeah, I feel motivated to go tackle (laughs) something now. I think I, yeah, you can do it. I start with a drawer. Yeah, I always tell people like that is a perfect place to start because it's pretty small like you can do it in an afternoon, you and you post drawers a lot, and I, I like do. it. I yeah. love a drawer. <laughs> yeah, I like the junk drawers and the things that you post because I'm like, wow, like if I just got a little insert like that or yeah. something, it would get rid of a lot of our clutter. Like. Baskets are so clutch, mm-hmm. and I find I have a lot of baskets that I'm not using well. But when I put it in my laundry room or even the pantry, and it's like, okay, all the juice boxes go in this this little container. Mm-hmm. It yeah. just brings so much organization to the whole space. Yeah. It also defines how much you can have of something. <laughs> so, you know, you won't go to Costco yeah. and get a whole new thing of the Honest Company juices, which is what I do. Yes. <laughs> and then I have them forever. But it helps. Yeah. Because yeah, I can look in that basket. I, I can kind of take stock of what I have before I go shop. So, yeah. <laughs> so you've obviously shared the different kinds of spaces that you've worked with. Could you share what all your services are that you offer? Because I know it's a lot. Yeah. Check your website. Well, basically, I'll <laughs> say it this way. I will organize any space that you want me to. So I have organized um, residential spaces. So pretty much any room in the house, your car, I'll organize your car for you. I think sometimes people Mm. overlook, you know, Mm -hmm. that space and we're in it a ton. Um, Offices, I've done some desks and yesterday I was in an office in the city and just really got that functioning for um, the person in there. So I... In addition to organizing spaces, I will do like nursery setup, which mm-hmm. I am seriously frothing oh, at the mouth. Can I somebody <laughs> please email me because I cannot wait to get my hands on a nursery. Yeah. And because I even saw on your website, like bringing the gifts back from a shower correct. when you don't know what to do and you're overwhelmed as a pregnant new mom and you can come in and help them. Totally. Um, and then like, even when you're combining households, if you're getting married, it's a great time for, Mm -hmm. to bring somebody in to kind of like go through everything and make sure that, 
when you're combining all that stuff, you're keeping the yeah. things that serve your, you know, your new family or your, you as a couple, um, combining, you know, families, blended families, that type of thing. Um, so, so this yeah, is a lot of areas too, that maybe someone wouldn't think of you maybe at first, like you just said, a combined family, like if two people are getting married and they already have children, right. but how having an outside expert come in could make that process not just less stressful but fun and enjoyable right yeah moving is another big one mm -hmm. so when you're moving and I can help you declutter prior to moving which is so important yeah. because you pay per like you pay per pound you pay for how much you end up moving so yeah. when you are paying out those movers you don't want to be paying them for things right. you don't actually want to be taking and I you. like when you mentioned too like people like blending a household or like just uh, getting married. Yeah. <laughs> if you had someone Shower help gifts. you. But yeah. I'm thinking even ahead of time, like if you're maybe taking inventory of what you have or what your husband has, if you're not living together yet or what have you, getting someone to help you organize before you make your registry. Totally. Because then <laughs> you would know like these are things we could really use. Mm -hmm. These are things that we didn't realize like we both have 16 of. So maybe we don't register for this. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you just don't register for like bunt pans when you don't bake. Or China, unless you plan on using it. Oh my gosh. It. I was just talking to a girlfriend in mm. my small group who she loves baking. And mm -hmm. I was like, do you want to just like come to my cupboards? Mm -hmm. Because I have like four bun That's pans. Like, yes. Why? And I always <laughs> remind people like reach out to your friends before you buy something very specific that like you yeah, might not use a lot. Like even landscaping equipment like I feel like our mm. our the men in our life kind of like get excited and then they want to buy a weed whacker and whatever but like maybe they don't use that that often so right. you know whether so it's smart. in the kitchen or landscaping equipment or anything very specialized to mm -hmm. your life don't forget to like reach out to people I mean use your community That's really smart yeah because Amazon Prime they yeah. have a mixer <laughs> A big mixer and Robert even told me like oh did you see this I go yeah and I don't bake so I don't need that right. <laughs> let's skip over it but I hadn't even thought of that if mm -hmm. ever I wanted to I'm sure a neighbor had one yeah, yeah. it's not a good deal if you don't need it I just I just oh, want wow. to remind everybody what is that, sorry like what is that <laughs> expression Such like a party pooper but like fifty dollars <laughs> off a hundred dollars might seem like a good deal, right. but you're still spending $50. You don't need it. Yeah, it's so true. But it's it's really ingrained in our culture. And I, like I said, I don't really like to be a party pooper, but it is it's good. great. We need the truth. To, yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit of truth bomb, but it's great to just take pause and really think about the things and how they serve us instead right. of us being of service to our things. So yeah. we want community. We want to be, you know, happy and being having great relationships and we don't want things to kind of like be preventing us from yeah. doing those so well I like that you mentioned community because I was going to ask mm -hmm. speaking of community I know that you have a workshop or two coming up with someone else from our community I do. she's actually been on our show <laughs> um and so she talked a little bit about you know getting your wardrobe and your closet in order because Yes. Jessica Timblin is a stylist. How are you guys pairing up? Tell us what you're doing together. Well, I am very excited. We've been wanting to do this for a little while. So finally, we both were able to pick a date. So Saturday, July 27th at 10.30 a.m. Okay. at Sovereign, um, we are having a workshop. It's called Simplify and Silhouette. And so we are, she's going to be talking a little bit about her services that she offers, which is um, the short shop style. And I feel like it blends so well with what I do mm -hmm. because I basically, we, we have a lot of overlap kind of with the sorting process. Um, and so we both have a passion for simplifying your closet so that the things that you love are very easy to see. It's easy to get dressed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all want to look good and I feel like it's so important for us to feel good and yeah. be show up professionally and in our lives and feel great so we are having a workshop it's gonna be really fun we're calling it a party <laughs> we're gonna have mimosas and we're just really excited we I think nice. we're a really good fit and we have a really good time together so I think that oh, the that's awesome. gonna be fun. and you can sign up um, you can get tickets. It's through Eventbrite, through um, the link in like my Instagram bio. It's called Simplify and Silhouette. Awesome. And what's your Instagram handle in case someone At forgets? Namaste Organized. Awesome. And we will share that because your Insta stories, I love them. So, I'm so glad. Listeners, if you're not following her, follow her. 
Yes. You got tips, like even when you said, here's a tip for your car. When you get out, throw the trash away. I was like, yes, Melissa. Well, sometimes I feel throw so sad. And that's so practical, like, but people it's... People are like rolling their eyes at me. No, no like, people need to hear I'm writing them down. Ever since, I think <laughs> no. you actually told me about that. Yeah. You're like, Rachel, I don't know why I haven't done this before. And then I was like, <laughs> me either. So now every time I get out of my car, I don't go through the whole car. And that's yeah. the problem is like, at least my area is clean, but I don't always right. go to like the third row of our Sorry. SUV to clean it's out cool. all of the girls' crap. <laughs> But I try to at least throw out, like, any coffee cups or receipts that I've mm-hmm. stuffed down in, like, the side. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, like, our trash can is right at, like, the end of our driveway there. Like, we kind of have a little area. Like, why haven't I done this sooner? I don't know. You need someone to just point those things out. Yeah. And yes. What's what there for? So. I was actually going to mention, too, Jessica. I don't remember if it was her or I was at a workshop with her and Melanie Fisher, who does... Um, the capsule wardrobe, which mm-hmm. is even more simplifying. Mm-hmm. Yes. But one of them talked about, um, since we were just talking about spending money and <laughs> still spending, they um, brought up the whole concept of, like, the cost per wear. So I think it might have been Melanie because she was talking about how with a capsule wardrobe you have much less. But she's like, you know, I might spend $100 on a pair of jeans mm-hmm. because these are one of three pairs of jeans that I'm going to wear for right. a whole season. And so she's like, you know, if you do the math, a hundred dollars, but divided by like twenty five times, what what is that? <laughs> four. That's four. <laughs> I'm really bad at math. <laughs> well, we'll come back to talking about education because Melissa has another yes, product in the works. But, but do the cost per yeah, wear. If you yeah. spend more, but you wear it more, do you just have it's to much more your affordable than buying four four shirts or four cheap pairs of jeans and <laughs> wearing them a couple times. Right. Totally. You know, twenty dollar pair of jeans that you wear once. That's $20. And so that was a good way of framing it for myself because just, yeah. I like that. Spending more on less, but things that will last longer, things that are better quality, stuff like that. Yeah. Quality over quantity for sure. True. Yeah. So tell us about this education piece yeah. that Christine As like we finish up here, here. Yeah. I well, am excited to hear about this. Well, I'm so glad you're excited because I'm excited to tell you about it. Um, my husband and I, we hadn't really been talking about it because this has been in the works for a little while, but we are starting a school. And it's um, a learner-based driven environment, and we'll have two studios of mixed ages, so there's not really grade levels, you just have students of varying ages kind of helping each other out and doing a lot of practical learning. So there's some Mm concept-based learning the beginning, say, of a school day, and then basically the rest of the day is just project-based. Um, kind of doing things on their own and just really applying the concepts that they're learning. Wow. So we're really excited. We just felt um, really called. We went to a conference and kind of heard a a former teacher talking Mm -hmm. about how he really saw the love of learning just distinguish and especially extinguish, excuse me, in middle schoolers, particularly that age is really when he saw learners um, kind of lose lose their excitement over it. Right. So we felt very, um, we, we felt like that was kind of true to our experience. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we did fine in school, but I don't think it fostered like a love of learning and we, we love learning now. And I think that is, you know, because there's so much like you can explore podcasts you're interested in. You can, (laughs) you can meet people that have, you know, similar interests to you and you follow your own, you know, people are born, kids are born with an inherent curiosity and love for learning. And we basically just want to foster an environment that allows for that to continue instead of, you know, yeah. squash it. So this is um, your local to Lancaster. So this Correct. is going to be in the Lancaster area. Correct. Yep. Okay. We um, are zeroing in on a building in Greenfield. So we're kind of working on the contract with them, but we're pretty sure that that's going to go through. And nice. we've hired a we call them guides because they're there to guide the learners. Um, you probably know them as teachers, um, <laughs> but some of the no- nomenclature for us is important because like yeah. that that means a different thing to us. Right. So, yeah. So it'll be in Greenfield, and I bet it'll be very beautiful and organized. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But the website site is up. So if people want to explore kind of what the concept is and what it's based off of, it's solveitacademy.com. S-O-L-V-I-T academy. 
Com. Okay. I love yep. Yeah, I'm gonna look at nice. that. Nice. Yeah. I wanna check it out. So right when you leave, I wanna look at I'm not <laughs> yeah, like cool. from an education background, but would that be like the kind of being freer to learn as like at your own rate and mm-hmm. like explore the the concepts and the things you're more interested in. Isn't that kind of more of like a Montessori type? It is. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, so it's basically... Similar to like a Montessori style? Yeah, so we visited a school. Um, it's based off of um, a concept, a school called Acton Academy in Austin, Texas. Okay. And they, the owners are a husband and wife team, and they kind of pulled concepts from Montessori, Saul Khan, if you're familiar with Saul Khan, the One World Schoolhouse. Um mm-hmm. If you're interested in this at all, the book um, that we read is um, Courage to Grow, and that okay. is written by Laura Sendeffer. She's the wife of the husband of the couple. And then um, a documentary to watch is Most Likely to Succeed. So those are kind okay. of two. I heard of that. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's great. Okay. It is, yeah. So it's an interesting watch, even if you're like, right. whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah, but, like, that um, sounds interesting to me. Yeah, so, so we're really excited. And it'll be K through 4 to start um okay. and yeah well, we're excited yeah, to yeah. follow your journey yeah, nice. yeah, I mean, it's a, all your projects <laughs> it's a really bu- busy season um but really exciting and i've i've heard something i think on a podcast recently like when life is telling you to sprint like lean in and like sprint and i feel like that's kind that's of what's yeah. happening right now I don't know. yeah you guys that's so like cool though i always are. feel like if you can communicate well if you are good at staying organized, creating systems, things like that, which you obviously excel in, you can apply that in so many areas. Mm -hmm. And obviously, I think just as you've been successful in your organizing business, I can see this school is going to be great. And I didn't even know about this, so I'm so excited that, like, just today, before we started to record, I'm excited to come out. in there, but we just kind of, things are really starting to pull together, and we're excited about it. So Yeah. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first. (laughs) Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, oh, and we've mentioned guys. it before, but in case you don't follow Melissa yet, it's at Namaste Organized, and be sure to check out that information about the workshop coming up. We also want to invite you um, to the Bell and Berry Fall, or I'm sorry, oh, home and style. Summer, summer yeah. Market. Summer Market happening this weekend. So be sure to join us. And we do have a date, a tentative date for the fall. So stay tuned as well, again, at the Lampeter Cafe. So if you miss the summer one, there's going to be a fall one. Awesome. Cool. um, Melissa, thank you for joining and thank you for being patient with us as we sit here with our our little babies as they listen. Of course. (laughs) course. We have one that fell asleep and we've got another (laughs) one, little hungry lady that kept eating and keeping Christine busy. Like you said, we're juggling it all. So thank you. And listeners, thank you so much for joining as we learn tips and tricks all along with you. And if no one told you yet today, you are doing amazing. Thank you so much for listening today. You are a part of a growing community of moms, business owners, and women who are here to encourage and inspire. You can connect with Rachel at Rachel Klein Creative on Instagram or rachelkleincreative.com. To keep up with Christine and her latest events, follow her business journey on Instagram at Bell and Berry Co. And if you want to be first to know about upcoming guests and giveaways, sign up for the Thrive Podcast email list today. Simply visit rachelkleincreative.com slash the Thrive Podcast or follow at the Thrive Podcast on Instagram. If you've enjoyed listening this week or you've already added our show to your favorites playlist, we'd love for you to write us a review on iTunes. Your support and positive feedback allows us to keep encouraging moms and business owners each week. <laughs>